This genetically modified plant is at the center of a controversy. A controversy about how we deal with one of the most powerful technologies mankind has ever created. A technology that is polarizing society. The protagonists include a now retired professor at ETH who believes his golden rice will save children throughout the entire world. A Swiss agricultural chemical corporation that first wanted to commercialize the miracle rice then changed its mind. And a country where tests are being carried out that would be prohibited in other places. Researchers who manipulate crops are demanding more freedom, the freedom to conduct their research free of political constraints. They feel the moratorium that has been imposed on genetic technology for years unfairly hinders them in their efforts. But public distrust of genetic manipulation has been immense for many years. Artificially modifying the genetic structure of plants and animals scares people. Also because researchers are hesitant to reveal their secrets and explain exactly what it is they are doing. In this tense and polarized atmosphere, Professor Ingo Potrykas of ETH Zurich, an engineering, science, technology, mathematics and management university, has created in a greenhouse a strain of genetically engineered rice that contains pro-vitamin A. The rice is intended to benefit undernourished people, not feed the profit of the agricultural industry. I hope that the mother of the families in which vitamin A mangel a problem is, begriffen haben, that it gut sein wird, diesen Reis zu essen. Wir erwarten, dass dieser goldene Reis Ende dieses Jahres in den Philippinen endlich zum Bauern kommt. This is the poster boy of the GE industry, the seeds and genetical engineering industry. This is something, uh, yeah, it's a Trojan horse. But is the golden rice a blessing or a curse? We went to the Philippines in search of the answer. The country is home to 90 million rice eaters. Here, rice is not just a basic food staple. It's part of the culture. This is where people are being asked to abandon their accustomed ways and switch to the new golden yellow type of rice. We traveled to the Philippines to find out how this idea is being implemented. We were told the authorities would decide within the year whether to approve the rice. At the International Rice Research Institute, preparations are well underway. The Erie wants to bring the new strain of rice to market. Our quest began in the capital city of Manila, a metropolis with a population of 12 million. Do the people of the Philippines want this kind of product? Have all the risks been identified? Or are people afraid of unforeseen side effects that might occur when store shelves are filled with a genetically modified version of their most important basic foodstuff? We're stuck in our hotel. For weeks we've been in touch with the authorities, but now that we're here, they don't want to see us. Why not? Are they afraid we'll ask unpleasant questions? The Erie also stops communicating with us. While we're still in Switzerland, we had arranged to film the next harvest of the golden rice. But one month before the appointed time, our request was rejected. The Erie won't tell us why. We're perplexed. The inventor of this miracle rice, Ingo Potrykas, has lived and worked in Switzerland for many years. He is dedicated to the idea of harnessing unpopular genetic technology and using it to help people. Seit dem ersten Jahr meiner Arbeit war mein Wunsch, meine Arbeit so zu organisieren, dass die Nutznießer die Armen sind. Ich bin kein Wissenschaftler. Ich bin ein Ingenieur. 
Ich möchte praktische Probleme lösen. Ich benutze Wissenschaft als Mittel, um ein praktisches Problem zu lösen. They are at the heart of his efforts, malnourished or undernourished children and pregnant women. Acute vitamin A deficiency usually results in blindness or even death. The World Health Organization estimates that 200 million children around the world suffer from a lack of vitamin A. Since the 1980s, Ingo Petrikas has concentrated his efforts exclusively on rice, the staple food of the poor. For 13 years, his research produced no visible success. Then he teamed up with Peter Bayer, a cellular biologist from Freiburg. Together, they finally achieved the unthinkable. Im Februar 1999 ruft mich der Peter Bayer abends in meinem Labor an. Es war schon lange dunkel. Ich war noch da und er ruft mich an und sagt: Mach mal deinen Computer auf. Ich schicke dir ein Bild. Das wird dir Spaß machen. Und wir waren natürlich elektrisiert nach so langer Zeit nicht nur weiße, sondern auf einmal ein paar gelbe Reiskörner zu sehen. Denn dort haben wir gesehen, wir haben es tatsächlich geschafft. The world's media praised Ingo Petrikas and his colleague for their breakthrough. They were also honored by the scientific community. They were even given an audience with the Pope. But the golden rice engineers were still a long way from achieving their real goal. We set out to find people in the Philippines who are suffering from vitamin A deficiency. Payatas, a village on the outskirts of the city of Manila. Tens of thousands of people live off what they can find in the trash. If they find anything that can be reused, they try to resell it for a few pesos. But that's hardly enough to buy healthy food. We accompanied the community doctor, Amira Dyson, on her rounds through the village. Life is tough here, she said. Many had just one, or at the most, two meals per day. Morning, Pop. Dr. Dyson examines the children for all kinds of problems at regular intervals. Respiratory diseases and infections are rampant, she said, as well as digestion problems. At least hindi naman siya maputla, no? At saka klaro yung kanyang mata. And what about vitamin A deficiency? Very good. Sige, tingnan ko yung kamay. I've been a doctor here in Payatas for about three years now and so far I have not seen any vitamin A deficiency in this place. Um, this is probably because of the regular um, giving of vitamin A supplements in among children, among preschool children. It's a regular program already from Department of Health. The government distributes vitamin A in health centers like this one. Children between the ages of six months and five years receive two doses per year, free of charge. The program is very successful. According to national statistics, 40% of the population was not getting enough vitamin A as recently as 10 years ago. Five years ago, that figure had decreased to 15%. It is not clear how many still suffer from vitamin A deficiency today. The pro-vitamin A rice would be less expensive for the government. The inventors of the project are sure of it. But first, the golden rice must make the transition from the laboratory to the rice paddies. The researchers set out on a quest for money and power and found both in the world's largest agricultural chemistry corporation, Syngenta, in Basel. Syngenta ist auf ein Angebot von uns eingegangen. Und unser Angebot war folgendes. Wir übertragen die Rechte an unsere Erfindung für kommerzielle Nutzung an die Firma, die bereit ist, im Gegenzug unser humanitäres Projekt zu unterstützen. But a sensitive issue remained. Where is the borderline between commercial and humanitarian use? Unser Ziel war, alle 
armen Bauern kostenlos teilnehmen zu lassen. Und Syngentas äh, Interesse war natürlich, das möglichst eng zu definieren. Denn sie wollten ja möglicherweise ein Geschäft machen. Wir haben uns dann auf ähm, eine Definition äh, geeinigt. Wenn ein Reisbauer nicht mehr als 10.000 Dollar pro Jahr mit diesem goldenen Reis äh, Profit macht, dann wird das noch als humanitär betrachtet. Syngenta improved the genetic technology. The number of foreign genes in golden rice was reduced from nine to two. A corn gene and a gene from a bacterium. Ingo Petrikas founded the Golden Rice Humanitarian Board, which was to guide golden rice to worldwide success. Adrian Dubach, a former Syngenta employee, was named executive secretary. He explained where the financial backing for Golden Rice came from. Today, the Golden Rice project is being financed in the Philippines and Bangladesh by the Gates Foundation for the last uh, couple of years. Uh, it's being financed by a little bit, a little residue of Rockefeller Foundation money and a little bit of USAID money in Asia. Warren Buffett, who also has contributed to those funds, and uh, Bill Gates' dad, who's also part of it. Uh, uh, I think they are funding this project as part of a portfolio of potential health interventions to try genuinely to improve the lot of the impoverished of society and improve their life expectancy and improve their quality of life. Illustrious names, powerful philanthropists as financial sponsors. Adrian Dubach implied that the money from the super-rich donors was not just a blessing, but also brought risk, still. Without it, we would be nowhere. So we're extremely pleased to have it. Um, whenever you accept funds from an organization, the organization wants to involve itself in the management. Uh, that's understandable and can't be refused as they're handing out the checks. The Gates Foundation wanted to distribute the miracle rice to the Philippines first. We wanted to go there just in time for the harvest of the vital but genetically unmodified basic food stuff, something no other camera team had ever been allowed to film. Although our invitation was subsequently rescinded, we decided to give it a try anyway. We met the local representatives of Greenpeace. They have been monitoring the activities regarding golden rice with a skeptical eye and are familiar with the exact locations of the golden rice fields. A group of observers operating in secret has already checked out the area. We are entering at the main gate. entering, have to get the main gate. Yeah, uh, suspected uh, fire site. But it's fenced? Yes, it's fenced and uh, it's a it's restricted uh, uh, facility. Will Greenpeace be able to get us there? Why do you bring us there? So that the public will know what's happening with Golden Rice. Yeah. So the debates about the safety and the issues around Golden Rice should be made much more public. The experimental rice field is on the premises of Phil Rice, the National Rice Research Institute. Phil Rice and Erie have collaborated closely on golden rice. We are turned away at the main gate. It won't be easy to get in. An employee refers us to her boss. We ask him whether we can film the golden rice harvest. Yes, ma'am. What can we... Hello, my, na my name is Daniel. Uh, this from my... Sir, no video. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No cameras, no information. Sounds like a well-kept secret.